even during the holidays, we call it Take Five for Foodies. Even when I've got a guest who can take far more than five or 20 or <laughs> an unlimited amount of time talking about food. Barbara Fenzel, founder of Les Gourmets That's correct. Cooking School. Do you remember growing up with an interest in food or did it happen later on? It happened later on. My, well, my mother always liked food, but she had a very fussy audience. And so we all, I didn't, didn't appreciate it. Except Who's that your father? You my mean? father. He sort of said, mm, he didn't like vegetables or anything. So when my mother would make an artichoke, she'd sit there by herself eating it like it was wonderful. And so she made me appreciate oh. other things. Oh, but, but artichoke. <laughs> you just said the <laughs> avocado artichoke. Yeah. God didn't even have to get past the A's as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Talk about the guest chefs that you have had as your guests at Le Gourmet. Oh, I've had Jacques Pepin. I've had Martin Yan. I've had Paula Wolfert. I've had Perla Myers. I just had Diane Morgan who wrote Name it dropper. <laughs> and all the local chefs, Mark Tarbell, Vincent Garato. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that, of course, establishes the standard that you have of excellence at Le Gourmet. But what happens, though, if, as an amateur at this business, mm -hmm. as so many of the folks are, they do their best, right. but during the holidays, it's really difficult. What mistakes do they make? Okay, the biggest mistake is trying to do too much. The, the secret is keep it simple, know what you, are comp what you are able to do, and the most important thing is to be organized. Um, make a list a week ahead of time or two weeks ahead of time of what you want to accomplish on what day. You can set the table four days ahead of time. You can have all your serving pieces out. You can buy all the ingredients and make sure you have all the equipment you need. You just lost <laughs> half the audience <laughs> who said, wait a minute, who does that? Well, maybe you do, but people are saying, wait, the holidays at my house and I'm doing this and I'm doing that four days in advance. Well, I mean, you've got all the other things going on, too. You've got the trim of the tree and the packaging and everything. So the food, you know, usually waits to last, and then you're in a panic. And I, I think it would be better to go buy something at the store than try and make it yourself if you're going to create bad memories for your family. It's all about creating wonderful things for your family. And if you're stressed out and yelling at everybody because the food isn't ready on time, then you've destroyed the whole image. Do you think that some of the people who are doing prepared food now are doing a good enough job that, oh, absolutely. that you would you would give that to your family? What I would do instead of buying the whole dish prepared is I would take some shortcuts. If you want to have a cooked chicken, I'd go buy a rotisserie chicken and I'd take the chicken off the bone and I'd have my cooked chicken instead of poaching the chicken myself. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to make a casserole, that one of my favorite casseroles is tortillas and chicken and tomatilla sauce and this wonderful cheese, you can go buy a tomatilla sauce and still make the casserole and you can still call it yours. You can buy the butternut squash already cut up in most grocery stores now and make a great butternut squash soup. Once it's cut up, it's easy. And then you can do little shortcuts like that. All these little things in the store now are sort of your mise en place for what you're going to do. Most chefs, you know, in a restaurant have 10 little people behind them chopping all the garlic and the onions and everything. But if you buy those things in the grocery store, that's your sous chef. The chef never seems to read a recipe. No. Even if it's a new dish, he never or she never seems to read a recipe. And I always have to in the kitchen. I mean, every single item, because I'm not that good. Then I'd give you an A+. Plus. Really? Because most people don't read the whole thing through, and they start, they see the ingredients, and they start doing things. And they get to the bottom, and they found out where they were supposed to save part of the butter to put in later. They were supposed to do something differently. They didn't read what equipment they needed, and they've got everything ready, and then they don't have the right size pan. So read the whole recipe. So you're not reading it dunce, then, in the eyes of Barbara Fenzel. Absolutely if not. If you read a recipe. Absolutely not. Um, and especially baking. Okay, baking is not cooking. It's a science. And you do not stray from any baking recipe or it won't turn out. I have, really? I have chefs that have weighed the ingredients, taken the temperature of the air to make sure everything is perfect for a cake. So you need to follow a recipe for baking to the letter. It sounds like you're, you're not talking about baking as a part of cooking. No, the, actually, if you ever talk to any, ask, ask a chef next time that you have on the show if they bake. Cook, chefs do not bake at all. They have pastry chefs. And when I have teachers at my school that are famous chefs, they bring their pastry chef with them to show how to make the dessert. What mistake do people make under pressure? Pressure cooking. Okay, they, they try to go too fast and they either cut themselves or 
they, which happens, or they put the wrong ingredients in, or you know the kitchen's a mess. I like to clean up as I go, so that um, things are nice and neat and tidy, and I don't get distracted. Okay, here's here's one then for the lady who not only cooks splendidly, but has a cooking school. We're going to wrap this up with this question. What's the biggest disaster you ever created in the kitchen, Barbara Fence? That I created? Yes. Uh, you I must was, have blown Oh, it I did. Sometime. I did. I was a, a brand new uh, bride working for the Zoo Auxiliary as a volunteer, the Phoenix Zoo Auxiliary. And I was making peanut soup for a cocktail party that they were having for their A to Z cooking show for 150 people. So I filled my food processor up to the top with hot peanut soup and I turned it on. And I was also uh, eight and a half months pregnant. I turned the thing on. It not only went all over me, it went all over the ceiling. It went into the dining room. <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, I hope I haven't hurt the baby. And our four-year-old went out and told my husband I killed the baby. Oh. And he came running into the house and I was just sitting on the floor crying. I didn't know what else to do. That's a disaster. <laughs> I still have a few scars if you want me to show you. <laughs> wow. And think of the psychological scars that your husband went through. <laughs> Take five for food, Barbara Fenzel, Lay Gourmet. Oh, and by the way, if there's a chef or a restaurant or any place that provides dining advice or dishes for anybody out there and you haven't seen them on here, well, let us know, okay? All you have to do is contact R Scarfo, S-C-A-R-F-O, at ktar.com.